Hello everyone, I'm Jamin Yu from Carnegie Mellon University and I'm going to talk about our work, Model Agnostic Augmentation for Accurate Graph Classification. So this work was done while I was in Seoul National University with Suyeon Sim and Professor Yu Kang. Uh, oh, okay. So let me introduce our work at first and then go into the other sections. As you will know, graph data are very common in real world tests, including social networks, review graphs, or chemical compounds. Social networks represent friendships of people, and review graphs represent their preferences for various types of content, and chemical compounds consist of many elements and their interactions. In this work, we focus on the problem of graph classification, which is defined as follows. We are given a set of graphs and their labels, and we assume that each graph has a single discrete label. And we also assume that each graph has a node feature matrix X. And then we learn, we want to learn a graph classifier F that predicts the labels of unseen test graphs. Real world applications of graph classification include predicting the toxicity of a chemical compound, which is represented as a graph between chemical elements, or predicting the property of a social group, which is also represented as a graph consisting of many people. On the other hand, data augmentation is an essential technique used for various tasks in machine learning. Data augmentation, or DA for short, increases the coverage of training samples in the given space, and as a result, improves the generalizability of our estimators for unseen test data. This figure is an example of DA in the image domain where the task is object detection. So the, a dog in this image is not changed, it does not change in the augmented images, although in terms of pixel values, they are totally different images. So this kind of data augmentation does not change the information, but increases the amount of training data so that an estimator is trained better. This DA or data augmentation can also be done for graph classification. It is based on the an observation that every image is a grid structured graph. So image classification corresponds to graph classification and its graph is the same as an image in, in this viewpoint. We can consider an undirected graph G consisting of the set of nodes B, the set of edges E, and the node feature matrix X. Then any of these B, E, and X can be the target of data augmentation. However, there are difficulties for graph data augmentation. This is because the basic requirement for DA is to preserve the semantic information of an example. So in images, this can be easily verified visually as in the previous example of a dog, but in, in graphs, this is not easy. So even the change of a single edge in the graph structure can change the fundamental semantic information that we are interested in. Let's consider a molecular graph as an example. So we know that the left element, left compound, which is caffeine, is not very toxic, but we don't know what will happen if we add a single edge between any two elements or remove uh, an existing edge uniformly at random. So if, uh, based on our assumption for the data augmentation, we have two contradictory goals for effective augmentation. The first goal is to make sufficient change of the graph structure, and the second goal is to preserve the semantic information, although it is not easy. We propose five desired properties to achieve these two contradictory goals. So the first project, the first property and the second property are to, pre to change the node features and the number of edges at every augmentation. So these two properties are proposed to achieve the first goal to make sufficient changes of the graph structure. Sorry, on the other hand, we need to achieve the second goal by the, these two properties. So first, even though we change the number of edges at every augmentation, it should be unbiased. So if we repeat the augmentation multiple times, the changes should be unbiased and the graph connectivity should be preserved at every case. And at the same time, the augmentation should be done in linear time because the scalability is essential for applying this augmentation to large graphs. 
In this work, we propose two novel algorithms for graph augmentation that satisfy all our desired properties, while previous approaches fail to satisfy all of them. Our approaches show the best performance in nine real-world data sets, as we will introduce in the experimental section. Let me, let me introduce our proposed methods. We propose two novel algorithms for graph augmentation, which work in a model agnostic way. In other words, our algorithms work uh, in a model agnostic way. In, in other words, they work regardless of the graph classifier. So they can work with various kinds of graph classifiers because they work based on the graph structure. They are proposed based on different motivations and ideas. So the first algorithm node SAM makes balanced and stable changes, while the second algorithm submix makes a high degree of structural changes compared to node SAM. If we go to the first algorithm, the goal of node SAM is to make balanced and stable changes. Its main idea is to conduct two opposite operations at once, which are the split and merge. The first is to split the random node into a pair of nodes which are connected, and the second, the merge operation, is to merge a random pair of connected nodes into a single node. This figure shows how the split and merge operations are done in an example graph, and you can see that the resulting graph is not much different from the original graph, while the structure is uh, slightly changed. And the split and merge operations do not arbitrarily change the connectivity of the given graph compared to like adding a random edge or removing a random edge from the graph. But the limitation of the basic version is that it can decrease the number of edges. This is because split always creates a single edge between a random pair of nodes, but merge can remove more than one edge. This example shows why this, this happens. So in the left graph, we merge the nodes A and C into, to make the right, right graph, but it removed three edges by the merge operation. So because split always creates one, this violates our property one for the unbiasedness of the graph size. So we propose an adjustment operations to solve this problem. In step one, we compute h sub i, which is the expected number of edges that will be removed by merge. And in step two, we insert the same number of edges around the target node of the split operation. This figure shows how the adjustment is done between split and merge to make our changes unbiased. In the paper, we also propose an optimization technique to compute, to compute an estimation of h sub i in linear time. And let me go to the second algorithm, submix. The goal of this algorithm is to augment the data graph in a subgraph level, while node SAM is a node level algorithm. So since the chain degree of change is a subgraph level, the degree of augmentation is also much larger with submix than with node SAM. As you can see in this figure, the main idea of submix is to generalize cut mix into the graph domain. Here, CONMIX is a popular augmentation algorithm in images, which is to insert a random image patch to an existing image. And if you generalize it to the graph domain, the rest of the graph in the figure corresponds to the head of the box, and it comes from another graph. This is how SUMMIX actually works for a set of graphs. We take two random graphs, G and G prime, from the given set of graphs, and select subgraphs S and S prime using a random walk diffusion. And we guarantee that each of these S and S prime is connected. And then based on the S and S prime, we replace S in G with S prime taken from G prime, making the new graph G bar. So in this figure, we take the S prime from G prime in the middle of this figure and insert it to the existing graph G to make the new graph G bar. Some mix can select graphs with different labels because it works on a set of graphs. For example, G can be toxic graph while G prime is not toxic. 
So the resulting sub-labeled white bar in the original in the resulting graph is computed as the weighted sum of y and y prime, which are the original labels of g and g prime respectively. Here q is the ratio of edges of g included in the new graph g bar. Now let me introduce our experimental result. We use nine data sets for graph classification, where seven of them are small molecular graphs and two of them are large social networks. Each data set consists of 300 to 100,000 graphs. We use GIN, which was proposed in iClear 19 as a graph classifier because it works well in various settings and domains. We include various algorithms as the baselines for model agnostic graph augmentation, including drop edge, drop node, graph crop, and motif swap, and so on. So their names imply how they work. For example, uh, drop node removes a node uniformly at random from the given graph, and motif swap changes an open triangle in the graph. So we answer various questions through experiments. First, the first question is, do node SAM and some mix outperform the baselines? We, ex we run experiments on our nine data sets comparing different algorithms for graph augmentation. And we see that our algorithm some mix and node SAM achieve the best performance in, in general. Here, node SAM makes the highest average accuracy but no some mix achieves the best average rank. This comes from their difference in their motivations. So NoteSAM makes stable changes. So it works very well generally in the nine data sets. So it achieves the best, highest, highest average accuracy. While some mix works the best in some data sets, but does not work well in some other data sets because it degree of change is much larger than the SAM. So it achieves the best average rank, but its average accuracy is lower than the SAM. And the second question is, how do the SAM and some mix change the graph size? The figure, these two figures shows the changes in the graph size done by these two augmentation algorithms as box plots. So they make sufficient changes of the number of edges satisfying our first goal to make sufficient amount of augmentation, but their changes are unbiased. So they are centered around zero. So this means that they are, they satisfy our the second goal for preserving the semantic information of given graphs by changing unbiased, by making unbiased changes. And the third goal, Question is how scalable are the SAM and some mix to large graphs? Here we experimented uh, their training time, their running time on graphs with different sizes, and the, our algorithms show linear scalability with the number of edges. On the other hand, motif swap, the best competitor, because it's the out of memory error because its scalability is not linear. Our last question is, how are augmented graphs distributed in the input space? We visualize the space of graphs, space of augmentation, or the space of original and augmented graphs in the 2D space. Here in these figures, the large blue dots represent the original graphs, and the small dots represent the augmented graphs. So if you compare our algorithms with motive swap, the best competitor, our algorithms make a larger degree of augmentation, filling in the gap between sparse original graphs. As a result, a graph classifier can be trained better with our augmentation algorithms because they can utilize the larger amount of training data. Let me conclude this talk. So in this work, we propose two novel algorithms for graph augmentation, which are known SAM and SUMMIX. They are model agnostic, so they can be used with any type of graph classifiers, and they are specifically designed for improving the accuracy for graph classification. Our contributions can be summarized as follows. This is the first comprehensive work for model agnostic graph 
augmentation. So there have been various works for model specific augmentation, which assume a specific type of graph classifiers, but there is, has been no comprehensive work for model agnostic ones. And our algorithm satisfy five desired properties for effective graph augmentation, which we propose in this paper. And they show the best performance in nine real world data sets. Thank you for listening. I am Jamie New, and you can email me any questions and you can see our code and data sets in this link. Thank you. Thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, so are there any questions from the audience? Okay, uh, Jexu has a comment. Maybe uh, you can unmute yourself and... Uh, okay. So I can see yeah. the question in the chat room. Oh. Um, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, it's just a comment. So I, I, I feel like uh, the author um, provide a very good work. And uh, it, it seems that it shares some idea with the graph mixer. So yeah, th this is a, a recent published paper and shares some insights with this uh, model agnostic method. And they might be helpful for the uh, future work. And uh, I, I personally think that uh, the data augmentation for graph classification, um, well, if we put them into a learnable fashion, that will also be uh, really interesting. But yeah, how to ensure that they work for any classifiers as they also presented um, is another interesting problem that we might uh, worth study in the future works. Yeah, it's just a comment, great work. Oh yeah, thank you for the great comment. I didn't know about the first paper you, you introduced, so I will read it for our future work and thank you for sharing. And as you said, I think it is very interesting to like introduce a learnable paradigm to the augmentation algorithm for making a better augmentation. So I think there are two main lines of work as I think. So the first one is to generalize augmentation without like complex parameters or com complex things so that the augmentation can be done generally with uh, regardless of graph classifiers or, or how we learn the parameters. And the second paradigm, second line of work is to improve the performance of augmentation by introducing some parameters and the learning paradigm and some objective functions and so on. So these two works are seem very great for me. And the second paper you introduced is also will help will help us also very much for designing our future work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this. Are there any other questions for the speaker? Oh, uh, I think David can, yeah. the hand. Uh, Hey, this uh, is David Gleick. Uh, yes. I can, if that's okay to ask a question, um, I will just ask it. Please and, go ahead. Uh, yeah. So you started with the idea that you wanted the graph modifications to be semantically equivalent. Um, are you aware of any data sets where they have been constructed, like a, a, a set of graphs have been constructed by different people to be semantically equivalent that might serve as a, a, a case for future work on how to design other types of semantically equivalent um, modifications to, to the graph? Oh yeah, thank you for the good comment. So yeah, as you said, semantic preservation is our main motivation of designing these algorithms. But, but as you will know, it is very difficult to guarantee the preservation without having domain knowledge. So there are some works that utilize the given domain knowledge to define the set of semantically equivalent graphs and to utilize this knowledge to design augmentation algorithms. And I think such line of work is very good, especially in terms of when we try to maximize our performance based on domain knowledge. So this work is not does not use any domain knowledge, so its performance is a little bit limited and uh, semantic preservation is also limited, like we can create some graphs without uh, concrete semantic preservation, but improving our approach to use the like set of semantically equivalent graphs, as you said, is a like very good way to improve our process of future work. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>